I appear before you with a heavy, broken heart. I will not ask you to put yourself in my place. You cannot, and I will not be so cruel to ask. 17 months have passed, but we, the survivors, remain frozen in three minutes and 42 seconds, the time between when the first missile was fired and flight PS752 crashed to the ground. We live in darkness. We are the victims of unfathomable evil and wickedness that ripped our loved ones from our embrace. The victims of terrorism don't have it easy. Some, like us, are put in a position to prove that it was terrorism. Without our government, we have no recourse to bring the perpetrators of this inhumane crime to justice. We have no recourse other than to plead with politicians to remain focused on revealing the truth and justice. We are in darkness. Why was the aerospace left open on that fateful dark winter morning or who in the highest ranks of that regime made the decision? Why and how were at least two missiles fired at the civilian aircraft no one asked why the Canadian passports and other belongings of the passengers were confiscated, willfully allowed to be looted and stolen. No one at the IKO raised their voice while every article of their conventions and annexes were breached by the Iranian government. No one at the IKO raised their voice against the mockery and blatant obscurantism in the shambolic reports published by the very perpetrators of the crime who were led to investigate their own crimes. It seems as if an entire airplane has been lost in the clouds of international diplomacy and credulity. Human error, systemic failure, a lone tired food soldier who made a mistake, radars oriented in the wrong direction, broken communication lines, convenient lies, disguised as mistakes and incompetence to whitewash willful murder. The past 17 months have been unbearable for us. We have been traumatized by the relentless psychological war unleashed upon us by the Islamic regime and their sympathizers, some of whom find Canada as a safe haven to operate in. All we hear is that we must wait. Compensation is not our priority. We have repeated this over and over again. Without the truth, there will be no justice. And without holding the perpetrators and commanders to account, justice will have no meaning whatsoever. They don't get to decide compensation unilaterally. Uh, they have committed an internationally wrongful act. It was the second deadliest terror attack in history against Canadians, after only the Air India bombing of 1985. In fact, more Canadians died aboard PS752 than on 9-11. Our demands are clear. Canada must take active leadership to mobilize the five affected countries. Canada must drag the IKO out of its timid passiveness, disguised as neutrality. The criminal investigation and legal proceedings must be launched in Canada. The PS752 case must be taken to every relevant international tribunal that can hold the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps to account, reveal the truth, and bring the perpetrators to justice. The IRGC must be included in the list of terrorist organizations, and the Magnitsky Act must be applied to commanders of the IRGC and other perpetrators of this crime. When you're dealing with, uh, with a regime that does not have an independent uh, air accident investigation system, uh, and that is the case in Iran, it's, uh, it's an integrated part of the government. It's not an independent investigative body like our Transportation Safety Board, for example. Um, and uh, uh, similarly, uh, the judicial system uh, is, uh, is entirely opaque. You don't know who's being charged with what and what the process is to determine their guilt or innocence. The reality is that, uh, you know, as the Ontario Secure Court is now found, based on various reports, all indications really are that this was not an accident. It was not That's not acceptable. Canada cannot accept this as another things just happen. This is this was no by no means was an accident. The, the truth really is that if there was any viable argument or any viable evidence that this uh, disaster was the result of human error or technological malfunction, Iran would have all the interest in the world to prove that to us, to prove that to the international community in a transparent manner. So at this point, all indications are that the attack, the shoot down was intentional. And as much as it's great to, to uh, try to prevent accidents in the future, uh, this wasn't an accident. We have not been told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And without that, no one can or should feel at all safe or secure in the still dangerous skies over Iran.
Canada lost 85 permanent residents and citizens. Dozens of talented academic minds were silenced forever. This Canadian tragedy can only be confronted with a clear roadmap to justice. We can only hope for that day. This is not about justice and truth for the families only. This is much greater than that. It is also about standing up for Canada as a country. It is about stopping a ruthless regime from taking the lives of innocent world citizens. Canada needs to know about the reports of Iranian airport authorities screening out people who hold American passports. They asked specifically every passenger whether they have American passports, having in mind that this was an intentional premeditated attack according to, to the evidence that we have on the balance of probabilities. Why should the Iranian regime care about American lives, but not those of the Canadians? We need to know when Mr. Tasker went to Iran, what did he find? Uh, he said in the testimony today that he had a chance to go to the crash site. But what did, did he see in the crash site? Everything was looted. Everything was bulldozed away. So I think in their press conference and in their report to the public, they have they had to mention that. They had to mention that, that Iran had breached every single regulation in Annex 13. And they had to say that Iran's airspace is not safe. Uh, there is no reason for anyone to believe that the skies over Tehran are any safer today than they were in January of 2020. After 17 months, we remain unclear about the path to the truth. There is no roadmap to justice or a strategy with a timeline. Had the world acted meaningfully in the aftermath of the MH17 mass murder, PS752 may not have happened. And now, if we don't act meaningfully for PS752, more innocent lives will be lost. We need to take leadership in the world, condemn Iran at IKO. Uh, we need to build alliances and coalitions to press the Iranian regime to, to put this, uh, the truth and justice for PS752 as a priority in all talks, including the JCPOA talks. We need to take Iran to the International Court of Justice, expedite uh, the negotiation process. We need to start a criminal investigation in Canada, uh, issue travel advisory, like uh, what was done for the case in Belarus, impose targeted Magnitsky sanctions on individuals who were responsible, enlist the IRGC as a terrorist entity, and unequivocally reject the fabricated scenario of human error once and for all. We have to speak clearly that the downing of PS752 was not an accident, was not a mistake, was not a human error, was not a systemic failure. We don't know why. RCMP has decided they cannot open a criminal investigation in Canada. 176 dead bodies. I think there is enough reason to start a criminal investigation. I understand they may not have access to all the evidence in Iran, but that's tr that should not be a reason not to open the criminal investigation. Iran has a representative in IKO, uh, Mr. Parvarish, Farhad Parvarish. Uh, uh, this person was one of the first people who denied shooting an airplane. This person is, uh, uh, has been in contact with IRGC and Goats Force in the past. There are documents supporting that, but he is in Montreal here in Canada, IKO here in Montreal in Canada. And it's unbelievable for us, for an organization that we are hosting, uh, acting so passively towards PS752. For Ryanair, they had an urgent meeting they didn't have even one urgent meeting about PS752. The Iranian regime did not only take the lives of 176 victims, they took the lives of so many thousands of people who were, um, you know, all the families who, who are now devastated, who, who feel oppressed, who feel helpless. Imagine what they do with the family members in Iran. Uh, we, we saw the Human Rights Watch report on 27th of May that at least one family member was tortured in Iran. They have like a cyber army and they use it in, in different social media platforms and uh, uh, they send us messages from fake and real uh, accounts. We have shared that information with RCMP. Kurosh mentioned RCMP before and uh, I think we need to see something, the outcome of this investigation, what they have done and especially in the criminal case if you don't open the criminal case here, if you don't put everything together like as, an, as a comprehensive job, I think we can't find the truth and we can't uh, uh, like teach them a lesson.
that uh, they can't uh, interfere with Canadian uh, citizens here in Canada. We understand RCMP doesn't have all the evidence now, but every other day I read, in fact, yesterday I was reading a, a newspaper we're talking about the court case after 30 years was solved. If you don't have an open case, even they become a cold case, eventually the evidence will be able, will come to surface. People travel outside Iran. They could be subpoena. They could be asked and forced to answer questions. So in absence of having any active investigation, how do you know you have enough evidence you, you don't? And you're prejudging that but completely is pushing it aside. Uh, we, we can set a reward for information. We already have informants reaching out to us through our association. Uh, we, we have no way of validating the, the evidence that they are trying to, to give us. We need the RCMP's help. In our opinion, Iran is not gonna tell the truth. If there's no pressure, and uh, we know, we think that they're so afraid of going to, going to uh, International Court of Justice, so uh, only pressure can, can help us. I just want to clarify something. We, we are talking about two different entities, Iran and Islamic Republic of Iran. Iran is a great country with great people, but the Islamic Republic of Iran is, is a hostage taker of a nation for 42 years. We are dealing with inter Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, with, the, with the history that all of us know. So they haven't said the truth about all the crimes that have committed in the last 42 years. Blood in November happened right 40 days before PS752, and hundreds of people died in Iran, got killed by IRGC. So when we say sanctions, we don't want to pressure Iranian people. That's why we are talking about targeted sanctions. Magnitsky Act and IRGC in a terrorist list. Just freeze their assets in Canada. It, Canada should not be a safe haven for uh, Iran, like uh, Islamic Republic criminals, like deport Farhad Parvish from Montreal uh, to Iran. This person doesn't deserve to live in Canada. I think we need to, as I said in my uh, opening, we need to teach them a lesson that it's not easy to kill Canadians. Canada needs, with, with uh, the rest of the world cooperating and collaborating, uh, to make it abundantly clear that we aren't going to forget, and we're not going to let the world forget, that 55 Canadian citizens, 30 permanent residents of Canada, and another 53 or 54 innocent people with direct connections to Canada lost their lives on that horrendous morning. That is something that Canadians will never forget.